for faculty who are interested in incorporating inquiry-based learning into their instruction, um, a couple of suggestions uh, come to mind. Um, one is, I, I would say, is to simply um, try to listen to students as much as you can. We have uh, two ears and one mouth, and we should use them in that proportion. <laughs> so um, I think those of us who um, enjoy teaching um, lo love to share our passion for the subject and love to explain, and I certainly put myself in that camp. But listening first, listening to students' ideas, I think can help us to then tailor the explanations um, to better match the needs of students. And, and even maybe then to change what might be an explanation into a question. Uh, by listening to the students and understanding where they are in their understanding of a complex idea, we can figure out what question is the perfect, exact, right question uh, or right next step for that student to take in deepening their understanding. Um, so listening as much as possible to students, I think, is, is a great place to start. Um, another suggestion that comes to my mind is um, you know, not trying to do everything at once, but, but taking steps and doing things in an incremental way. Um, you know, change is, is stressful. Um, by the time students, in particular, by the time students come to a college science course, they've had more than a decade of experience with learning and teaching, and they have pretty firm ideas about what learning and teaching is supposed to look like. If we incorporate student-centered, inquiry-based approaches to instruction, we're in a way changing the rules of the game of school, and that can create stress, understandably. And so making those changes slowly and explaining to everybody involved, including the students, why we're making the changes, why we're doing things in this new, unusual way, I think can go a long way to um, helping people buy in and, and uh, um, engage.